Hello and welcome to Sunday Morning Church at Unity of Faith Church. We're going to jump right into the Word. Father, we thank you for your Word. It's your Word is what leads us, guides us, directs us, and keeps us from stumbling and falling and standing strong and looking good for you. In Jesus' name, amen. You remember what we taught on last time we was together? Why did Jesus come here? And she just said that. And why did Jesus come to the earth? Why did Jesus, why did God send Jesus to the earth? And what is the first, what is the very first reason why Jesus came here? Anybody this is a little bit, we didn't go over that, but when you see it, you're going to say, yeah, that's the very first reason why he came here. The number one reason why Jesus came here to the earth. What is the number one reason that Jesus came here to the earth? Got any idea? See, what happens is when you think along these lines, when the enemy tries to mess you up, you, when you know why Jesus came here, what's the number one reason why he did come here, then it's easy because his burdens are easy and the devil tries to get in there and try to make them unbearable. But when you realize what God's here for, what Jesus is here for, well then, hey, you let him do what he's already supposed to be here for. Amen. What is the number one reason why Jesus came here? What's the number one reason why Jesus came here? Look in uh, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 20. It's actually our highest ministry. Our highest ministry, you can say it like that. But our highest ministry is to win people to Jesus. Well, it's above that. Really? Yeah. Well, our, high, our highest ministry is to praise and worship God. Real good, shout, run, scream, holler. Now, that's all good. We're not against any of it. But that's not the number one reason. The number one reason is so we can win the world. Well, number one ministry, so we can do the number one ministry, minister. Well, so I can be a minister and preach the gospel. And all those things are good. They're great. But our number one reason why Jesus came here is found in 1 John Chapter 5, <coughs> in verse 20. Number one reason. See, if you if you get a good foundation of the Word of God, then you don't get stumbled up. The only area of life that you're stumbling in is in because you don't know what the Word of God says and you're not doing that part of the Word of God. <laughs> Amen. So, you show me someone that is struggling. Oh, everybody struggles. Not everybody. I used to years ago. I didn't know any better. You know, I struggled just like you did. And then I started learning. Well, why did Jesus come here? Why did he come to the earth? And you have all these religious things going on. You know, stuff you learn in religious churches. You got to remember something. If you go to a religious church, all they can teach and preach is religion. They can't teach a real relationship with God through Jesus. 
Well, that's simple, isn't it? They can't. Why? Because that's all they know is religion. They've been ingrained in them. They grew up in it, you know. So that's why. So you just have to love them and go to a faith church. <laughs> well, I thought all churches were faith churches. Are they emphasizing the gospel through Jesus and his word through faith? If not, then you need to get to a place that's doing that. It's a faith church, okay? So the number one reason is in 1 John 5.20. You got that? What's it say? And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding that we may know Him, which is true. We And we are in Him who is true to His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. Okay. Now, the New Living Translation says, 1 John 5, 20, the number one reason why Jesus came here is through Him we have fellowship, relationship with God the Father. The number one reason why Jesus came here is because no one on this planet had re real relationship through God the Father. To God the Father. See, He would come on them, the anointing would come on them, and they'd do things. But now, through Jesus, which lives inside of us, now we have relationship with God the Father. It's all about relationship. It's all about relationship with God the Father. Okay? So, let's go on down. We're talking about why did Jesus... Okay, now, now we're going to talk about why are you here? Where people spend their whole lives. God, show me your will. Show me what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Then you ain't been reading your Bible. Because the Bible from Genesis to Revelation tells you what to do. <laughs> You're just reading it and not doing it. Where did you, or where do you not, what are you not on the earth? What do you not do on the earth? If you're taking notes, the first one is, what are you here for? We know why Jesus came. We know what he's here for. Why are you here for? Most people don't even have a clue. We're going to find out today. You're in the right setting today. Don't touch that dial. Amen. You're in the right church today. What are you on the earth for at this time? You could have been born any time. But you was born for the latter, for the last days. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wish I lived back in Jesus' day when He walked on the earth. Why? You got a better covenant than the old covenant. You got a better relationship than the, than the old covenant. So you don't want to be living in the old covenant. Oh, I wish I was with Moses. You'll have a veil across your faith and you across your eyes, the Bible says, and you can't see right. So you don't want to be practicing that. You want to do what God's told you to do. Why are you on earth? And why are you not here? What are you not supposed to be doing? Say it like that on the earth. Why? What are you on earth for this time? Why are you on earth for at this time? At this time. You wasn't born any other time. You was born however old you are. And God's worked in you up until this time. He will continually work. But if you know why you're here, if you know why you're here, boy, 
you can really you can really do some damage to the kingdom of darkness and you can really shine amen if you know why you're here okay so look in uh, john 14 12 it's going to tell you why you're here why are you here this is after this is Jesus talking, and he's going to tell you why you're here. Did you know when Jesus walked the earth, no one got saved? He never did preach the gospel. A lot of people got healed. A lot of people had miracles. Now, he was the living word right in front of them, but he had no death, burial, and resurrection yet, so he couldn't. He tried to tell them that it was coming, but they, they he, you know, they didn't, a lot of them didn't realize until after the death, burial, and resurrection, then people started getting born again and saved. Amen. So Jesus, in John 14, 12, says, Verily, verily, Jesus talking here, I say to you, who is the you? You. Whatsoever or whosoever believeth in me, believeth in me, will also do the works you mean to tell me that I'm going to do the works of Jesus? That's what you're here for. Hello? Anybody out there in TV land? <laughs> That's what you're here for? You mean I'm Jesus? No, don't get stupid. I don't, how would you say that in a nice way? Uh, that's right. Don't get stupid. People run around saying they're Jesus in goofy joke. No. Believe in me, not believe that you're Jesus. Just stick with the Bible, you'll do a whole lot better. Believeth in me, whosoever believeth in me will also do the works that I do. Whatever Jesus did, as you're led by the Spirit and by the Word of God, that's what you're to do. And even greater works. How in the world are you going to do greater works than Jesus? Let's go all the way back to what we said before the verse was read in John 14, 12. Jesus didn't preach the gospel. He, let me say it like this. He preached the gospel, but people just did not grasp the gospel until the fulfillment of the gospel, which is the last part, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. He preached and lived the gospel. Let me clear that up because sometimes people get off on what you say and go on a tangent and then they miss what you even said. So don't miss what's being said. See? The gospel is the telling of the story of Jesus. Well, he lived it the telling of the story of Jesus, but when he was on the earth walking around, physical flesh and bone body, he didn't, he didn't do death, burial, and resurrection yet. That was the last three, and the Lord's, Lord, he's Lord now, and coming again. Okay? So he didn't do that part yet. As far, he told them, and he spoke to them, and he tried to get, him, get it over to them, but until it actually happened, then they started, yeah, that's right. Then they confess Jesus as Lord, believe in their heart that God raised them from the dead, then they're saved. It's like this, like nowadays. Okay, so even greater works. So which it what's the greater works? Anybody got any idea what the greater works are? I'm gonna do greater works than Jesus? How are you going to do greater works than Jesus? you got to remember, he's talking about when he was standing right there in front of him, flesh and bone body, you could touch him. He said, now, those that believe on me, you could say it like this, keep believing on me after my death, burial, and resurrection, now Lord and coming again, confessing him as Lord, you're going to do greater works. Well, what would be the greater works? Anybody got an idea? What would be the greater works? 
You got any idea? Regina? Lincoln. Huh? Lincoln. The greater works is found in Romans 10, 9. Confess Jesus as Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead. You shall be saved. That's the greater works. Boy, that sounds simple. But see, that hadn't happened yet when this verse was written. Nobody was getting saved. Nobody was getting filled with the Holy Spirit until the Holy Spirit, till Jesus told him, said, Now, what did He tell him? He said, He blew on him. Remember that in Luke? He blew on him, and the Scriptures was open to him. So, What's the greater works? You get born again now. Romans 10, 9, you confess Jesus as Lord, believe in your heart that God will raise from the dead, you shall be saved. When? Right then. But that wasn't, that, that part of the Bible wasn't written yet. The Gospels was there, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Then the book of Acts came. Then they figured out through Paul, Paul's revelation, that, hey, you confess Jesus as Lord, believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, you're saved. You become a disciple, not one of the 12 disciples, of course, but you become a disciple. That means discipline one. Are you a disciple? Well, if you're a disciple, that means that whenever you get up, you're going to hang out with God. <laughs> Amen. Either, either you're being disciplined to do that or you become a disciple. <laughs> it's better to become a disciple instead of being disciplined all the time. And then Acts 19 Paul laid his hands on them. The Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues. You see that? So Jesus, before he left the earth, they saw death, burial, and resurrection. Now Lord and coming again. He's standing right there in front of them. So they knew that was real. And they had been following him around for, you know, three and a half years there. And then so what happened? Well, then he said the Comforter's going to come. That's some greater works too. The comfort is going to come. And at that time, boy, they needed some comfort. Why? Because their, their God died, even though he tried to tell them and he did tell them, but hey, in three days, I'm going to be raised up. You can tear this building down, this body down if you want to, but in three days, I'm going to be raised up. Flesh and bone body. So after that all happened, I mean, they wasn't even, they didn't have any faith on it. They was home they was home uh, molly grubbing, feeling sorry for yourself. So if you stay home molly grubbing, feeling sorry for yourself, guess what? You have to relate to Romans 10, 9. Hey, I confess Jesus as Lord. That means greater works. The greater works has happened to me. There's people on here. The greater works has happened to you. Up until that time, the greater works hadn't happened to the disciples. Not to degrade at all. That was that Jesus just hadn't death, burial, and resurrected yet. But he's death, burial, and resurrected now. So now you don't have to be in a physical location where Jesus is in a flesh and bone body. No, it can happen anywhere in the world. Your faith will work anywhere in the world. This is, well... If I was in a greater economy, where it, when, you can, when you get born again, you confess Jesus as Lord, believe in your heart that God's raised from the dead, you're saved. That means you're born again, Romans 10, 9. Then you do Acts 19. Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they begin to speak in tongues. When you do that, what happens is, and you start connecting with God through finances too, you get involved in God's economy. His economy never goes bankrupt. His economy never is broke. His economy, no matter, no matter what's going on, money just comes to you. That's his economy. So what economy are you hooked up with? Are you, amen? So what do you do? Well, you have to you have to do everything by faith. That means you can't go by what you feel. 
because the devil's right there. Oh, you can't do that this week. You can't do that this month. You can't do that. But if you don't do that, why in the world would you want to be connected to a curse? And no, God's not making your dryer blow out or your house burn down because you didn't tithe. No, that's the devil. You're connecting to God or you're connecting to the enemy forces. Anything that has to do with killing, stealing, or destroying is the enemy forces. So don't do that. Stay connected to God. Have enough Bible sense to not do it. So what's our responsibility? What are we to do? You know why Jesus came? Now what are you here for? Well, we went over a pretty good chunk there, so let's bite off a little bit more and chew on it. In uh, Mark 16, 20, if you got a Bible, open it up. It's going to tell you what you are to do. Mark. See my Bible? I didn't mark in that. Kenneth Copeland sent me a Bible. He said this was his Bible. so I said, well, thank you. Now I got Kenneth Copeland's Bible. <laughs> I'm sure he kept his own Bible too and made copies of it. But it was nice that he, he's already got it all color-coded and everything else, and it shows you how to do it. So, and uh, But I appreciate it. Mark 16, he's got all the Kenneth Copeland's handwriting and notes and everything. Amen. Mark 16, that's the very last chapter of Mark. It's going to tell us what we're here for. Now the number one reason why we're here, what is it? In John 14, 12, a lot of times people get hung up in doing works. No, our number one reason, the way we start our day is through Jesus. Now we can fellowship and have relationship with God. That's our number one reason. Okay, now in our Kenneth Copeland Bible, in uh, Mark chapter 15, it's going to tell us now why are we here? We know why Jesus came. If you, if you missed that somehow, go back uh, one video and it says, why did Jesus come here? Then go through that. We can't go back and do the whole thing, but we touched on it a little bit. So now we're, now we're looking at what the Bible actually teaches. Why are we here? Why are we here? I don't know what God wants me to do. Well, get your nose in that book. <laughs> Amen. You, you don't find out what God wants you to do unless you get your nose in the book. You know, keep watching these videos. There's 700 and something of them. Watch every one of them. It's going to tell you. Every one of them is going to tell you what you're supposed to be doing and what God's done already. So it'll be a great it'll be a good grasp on that. So in verse 15, that's in Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, and he said unto them, what's he going to tell them? He's going to tell them what they're here for on this earth. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. So the number one thing is we are supposed to preach the gospel. Now most places, unfortunately, I've traveled a little bit, been to Africa, been to Egypt, been uh, not every state in the United States preaching, but a lot of them, been to Canada ministering, been to Alaska a few times preaching, uh, been all down through Mexico 10 times from the top to the bottom ministering and teaching, been to Belize 14 times, Guatemala and different places. And... Uh, And I've asked people, it says, preach the gospel, what is it? <laughs> they couldn't tell me. Go back and watch the videos on that. To every creature, even to the every creeps, one version says, <laughs> every creep. Why? Because you used to be a creep before Jesus, amen. Verse 16, and he that believeth is baptized and saved, will be saved. So what's he doing? The gospel is going to, us being immersed, not necessarily talking about water baptism, but baptism means immersed, covered, 
you know, inside and out with Jesus and be saved. But he that believeth not is damned. I didn't say practice religion. Practice your relationship with God. You're tuned into Him. And you're damned if you don't. You can rub ropes, you can rub beads, you can practice Old Testament law and everything else. He didn't say to do that. Matter of fact, He said don't do it. <laughs> do this. What are we here for? To not be damned. If you're doing something other than what the Bible says to relate to God, you're damned. You don't want to be that way. So we're not supposed to be damned. Verse 17. And these signs, what is this? What are you doing? What are you supposed to be doing? And the signs will follow them that believe. Number one here, in my name, in the Ten Commandments, I tell you to come out. No. In the rubbing of ropes, the rubbing of beads, the dimes in the box, the lighting the candles, the rubbing the ropes. No. In my name. It's that simple. In my name, you got authority over the devil. I'm just going to live righteously. You can't. Righteousness is a gift. You have to partake of the gift. That's what part of the believing is. You got authority over the devil in my name. They will speak with new tongues. What are you supposed to be doing? Praying in tongues, speaking in tongues, taking authority over the devil. We know what Je well, Jesus did all that here on the earth. Yeah, but now it's your turn. And don't worry, it's him doing the works through you. You don't get no credit for it. But you can yield to him and say, well, I didn't do nothing. Did you stay in faith? Well, then that's why it happened. It don't just happen by accident. So you got a part to play in this too. It's all God and it's all you. You're co-laborers together with Christ Jesus. We're going to keep on reading here and find out. Verse 18. You shall take up serpents. And if you drink any deadly thing, should not hurt you. Doesn't say play with snakes and doesn't say go around drinking poison. What people that do that are stupid. Because the Bible doesn't teach that. It says if, doesn't say when, if something was to, I had a deadly snake. I was in Belize, Central America, and I was laying back, taking a break from cooking. I was a cook down there. I preached the gospel, but I also did some tent making and build, helping building and uh, mostly cooked. And I laying back on the hammock with me and another guy there and everybody else is gone. And I was laying back and my toes were up on the top of the hammock and I was kind of wiggling them. Well, a snake, deadly poison I found out later, saw that toe, big toe wiggling. It thought it was another, it thought it was another snake. <laughs> so it was, and the Holy Spirit said, look up. And I just laid there. I said, look up. I just laid there. I said, look up. That snake was getting ready to strike. He was already coiled up like that. I guess if I'd have moved my toe a little bit more, it would have hit it. And so I spoke fluent Spanish that day. Underly machete, underly machete, hurry up and get a machete. That's what I was saying in Spanish. The guy came out, what are you doing? I pointed at the snake. He got a machete. He flipped it off in the yard. I said, no, no. This is what you do to the devil's works. I got the machete. I went, put my shoes on, went down there and chopped that thing up like hamburger meat. I didn't want him coming back. <laughs> Amen. So, now, I wasn't taking up snakes. If you do saying you're doing what the Bible said to take up snakes to test your faith, you're an idiot. If you're drinking, going around drinking deadly stuff, you're being stupid. I don't know any, I don't know any other way to say it plainer. Uh, Lord, help me if I need to say it plainer. Okay. <laughs> and shall not hurt them. That they shall lay hands on the sick. What are you supposed to be doing? Huh? You're laying hands on the sick. What are you here for? Lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. 
What do, what do you do? You lay hands on the sick, and then that's it. They recover. Just tell them you'll recover. Why? Because you're saying what the Bible says. Don't say, pray that it happens. No, you already released and done what God said. Don't add nothing to it. That's going to hinder their faith and yours too. Didn't say wait and see. No, I said, shall recover. I remember one time I was down here at Sunny Stop. We have a little convenience store. I think it was called something else then. I went in there. There's a big old guy behind the counter, a young guy, probably in his 20s. And I, everybody was in line. And then about that time, he put his hands, uh, you know, sideways up on the counter and started falling over. A sucker's dying right there in front of me. And all the people backed up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They wasn't operating in faith. Faith don't get moved. I just fished my way through the crowd, stuck my hand through there, put it on his heart, and I said, Pain, go! Be healed! He went like, who did that? And all of them pointed their fingers at me. And I said, well, since I'm up here in line, you can check me out first. And he lived and didn't die. What did he do? He recovered. I didn't ask permission. May I pray for you? You ever notice Jesus never did say, may I pray for you? No, we learned that in a religious setting. May I pray for you? The Bible didn't say that. The Bible just says, lay hands on the sick, they recover. Let me see your head. Well, the Bible says, don't lay hands on them suddenly, so I guess you shouldn't slap them. But, uh, uh, said, but what do you do? Just, uh, just touch them. Just touch them. And they recover. Now look at the rest of this. What are you supposed to be doing? Is what we're talking about. What are you supposed to be doing? What are you here for on this earth? Well, I'm just, I don't know what to do. I'm praying God to show me your will. I've had people come to church here. We was up all night long praying for hours. It was six hours we prayed, God, show us your will. They came to church on Sunday thinking they was being uh, spiritual. They didn't know they was being stupid. They went on for a while about, we're looking for God to show us his will. They got done. They, she, the, the old woman shared, her mama, the son shared, the wife shared. Every one of them shared, God didn't show us nothing. He didn't show us anything. Oh, I don't know what to do. And they got done doing all the belly aching. I went like this. Held the Bible up. I said, he's got 66 books in the Bible. Tells you what to do. Did you read the Bible one time? No, I was trying to get God to see people. They're looking for some spectacular thing and they miss the supernatural. The supernatural is God's Word. If you read it and do it and read it and do it, you're living a supernatural life. If you're in faith and speaking faith and growing in faith, you're living a supernatural life. It's not in the gifts. Those are supernatural. But I've seen people operate in the gifts and don't even operate in faith. So what do you do? You operate in both. both. <laughs> but you know why you're here, see? Let's keep reading. Why are we here? We're taking our time, I know, but the Lord's having us emphasize this because a lot of people don't know. I've seen, preach, I've seen preachers preach, preach against it. Preaching against. Jesus said you're here to speak in tongues, to develop. Jesus said you're here to preach the gospel. Jesus said you're here to have authority over the devil and they're not doing none of it. Preachers! No wonder the churches are messed up. The number, the number one thing that God's telling them to do is have faith in God through Jesus so you can have a relationship with God. And they're to teach them to rub, rub ropes and, 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 and put dimes in boxes and all kind of crazy goofy stuff. Rub ropes and have their hair a certain length and have a big long dress and a big old hat on. What are you here for? To religious? No. How to kill your relationship with God. Oh, but I'm religious. I'm holier than thou. No, you're stupider than thou. Don't be stupid. 
do what the Bible says. Now let's go on to see what it says. Verse 19, Mark 16, verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, what did he say? Verse 15 through 18. Then was received up into heaven. They watched him go up into heaven. Well, that's the end of it, boys. No, it's the beginning of it, boys. Now you got to do those three verses that he said, or uh, four verses. And sit on the right hand of God. And they saw him go all the way up and sit down. In heaven. Look in verse 20. This is the last verse. And they went forth. What did they do? They went forth. And, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm so stupid. No. They went forth and they preached everywhere. What did they preach? They preached verse 15, 16, 17, 18. That's what they did. They preached everywhere. And what happened? The Lord didn't do nothing. No. They did it. No. They did the preaching. And what happened? The Lord working with them. How did the Lord work with them? Because, look at it, and confirming the Word with signs following. When you pray, when you speak, when you teach, when you preach, when you do whatever God tells you to do, are you speaking the Word over that? If you are, see, you do the speaking, God does the performing. You got the easy part. All you have to do is say the Word, and it's done. Amen? We're going to break this even further down tonight so you don't want to miss it. That's as far as we're going to go today. That would better put, better put a, a lot of things to look over. Amen? So go over the video. Go over the video ten times and when you get ready for tonight, you'll be ready to hit it again on a different area. Amen? Father, we just say there's people right now we know that they want to give their life to Jesus. Maybe you've been a religious practicer and not really a doer of the Word of God. Well, when you know what to do, you got to do it. Amen. And the Lord works with them, confirm the Word with signs following. Amen. And they recover. Amen. Just tell Him, you're going to recover. Just touch Him. You're going to recover. Lord, now if it's Your will, heal them. If not, let them die and go to hell. No. No. Well, I guess it wasn't God's will to heal them. No. What are you saying? Did you lay hands on them and tell them they'll recover? Or are you saying something else? The Lord can't confirm your goofy words. He can only confirm His words. Are you saying Isaiah 53, 5 over them? Or are you saying something else? No. He confirms His Word, confirms His Word, confirms His Word, confirms His Word, confirms His Word. Put stars, put circles, put flashing lights, put, put you know, whatever you got to do. He confirms His Word, but you're the one that speak the Word. You want more things to be confirmed in your life? Speak the Word more. If you're speaking 1% Word, you're getting 1% blessing. You're speaking 10% word, you're speaking 10% blessing. No, speak it all the time. That's why Jesus told the guy, only speak the word. Only speak the word. I had a friend, I was teaching him along this line, and uh, he was going to work with actually my pastor at the time. He was really evangelist. He wasn't, a, he wasn't my first pastor. There was a guy kind of took over the church a little bit. The first pastor had left. And he was a roofer, a carpenter, and he had this young guy with him that had spent the night in my house, and so he was sick. The guy was sick, so I was telling him all these scriptures and everything, and I was saying, the Bible says, let the sick say they're healed, so you can be healed. So I, I learned that with him, and then he, uh, he started saying it, started saying it, and he started, he started recovering, amen? So the next day, he went down with my pastor at the time 
to uh, go down to a church to roof this big old church. And uh, he said, the pastor said, how are you doing? He said, I'm healed. He said, you've been hanging around that mic right. No, he's been hanging around the Word of God. He said, it's okay to say you're sick. He said, I'm not going to do it. And he got really upset with him and he came back and he preached against me at church. And uh, he wasn't preaching against me. He's preaching against the Word of God. And you know that man, he stayed sick all the time. He's always had something going on, staying sick, saying he's believing God to heal him. And he never did recover from stuff. And even today, he's having a struggle. Why? Because you have to settle it. At preacher or no preacher, pastor or no pastor, you don't get to say what you want to say or what you believe. You don't get to do that. You have to do what the Word of God says. See? And when you do that, then the Lord works with you to confirm the Word and you'll recover. But he came against that young man all the time. The young man actually, oh, after that, went downhill. And I said, you don't have to go downhill. I didn't. He said the same thing to me that said to you, and you ran off, and I didn't. It's a decision you make. I'm going to do what the Word of God says, even if the goofy so-called pastor is not going to do it. I'm going to do what the Word of God says. I don't care if the evangelist won't do it. I'm not, I'm going to quit because the pastor quit. Well, who are you serving? I'm just going to stop because the pastor ran off with Susie Joe and Johnny Brown and dooby 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 doo. But well, who will you serve in? Who? Well, I'm not going to have him come to my church because he done messed up this or messed up that. Well, who had him? What God tell you to do? Hello? The Lord working with you confirm the word. So just say, Lord Jesus, he'll confirm it. I believe in my heart that God raised from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen. Romans 10, 9. I believe, I thank you, Lord, I've been born of the Spirit. Now I'm going to be filled with the Spirit, the evidence of speaking on tongues. The Holy Spirit comes on you right now and you speak in tongues. Oh, I can't do it. No. You don't say can't do it. This is this what you're supposed to be doing, speaking with new tongues. Well, my church don't believe it. Well, then your church ain't a church. Throw it out the window. You go out and you go find your place that it believes the Bible. Oh, they read the same Bible you are. Well, it's not necessarily what, it's what they're not reading to you that the problem is. No, get it all in there. Amen. Take all of it. Take all the blessings. There's 300, there's 3,000 and something blessings in there broken up in different categories. Just take all of it. Well, it's about me wearing a three-piece suit. Wear your three-piece suit. I don't care. But what are you supposed to be doing on the earth? Casting out devils. Laying hands on the sick. Preaching the gospel. See? Letting the wind of heaven open up on you because you're a giver. Amen. These things are obvious to me. And they should be to you after today. You don't have to wonder anymore. God, what do you want me to do? I don't understand. And you just hadn't been in the book. Amen. Believe what you read and the understanding will come. But if you're trying to understand first before you believe, it'll never happen. Because that's natural thinking. That's stinking thinking. No, you've got to have believing thinking and then you can receive what's being spoken even through this program. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit. I've been born of the Spirit when I confess Jesus as Lord. That's what you say. I've been born of the Spirit when I confess Jesus as Lord and believe that God's raised us from the dead. Amen. Now you can be filled with the Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. So you just take off. Speak a blue streak. Sure. It's not about feelings. It's about what are you supposed to be doing on this earth. See? <coughs> Amen. It helps you. Pray in tongues for an hour every day while you read the Bible and listen to faith-based material. Even these videos of some people, they, their devotional time, they just 
turn it on to this channel and they know we're going to be talking about faith in God. Well, don't you know any other subjects? Well, sure. But you can't get any other subject to work with unless you're grounded, rooted in faith and love. It's just a subject. It may be just good information. But just because you have good information doesn't mean you have revelation knowledge, which is a higher knowledge. That means you can't be talked out of it. And the only way you're not going to be talked out of it is if you're growing in faith. See? Pray in tongues, read the Bible, listen to faith-based material when you first get up. Just fill up on the Word of God that way. And give. Be a giver. It's down below, you can give. You can be a part of the ministry right there. Amen. So, go all the way back for just a second. What is the number one reason why Jesus came? Remember that? Bless us. Number one reason so we can have a relationship with God. Number one. Because without that, you got no blessing. Amen. Number one reason Jesus came is to have a relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 53, 5 says, By his stripes you're healed. 2 Peter 2, 24 says, By his stripes you were healed. That's reference to Isaiah 53, 5. And Matthew 8, 17 says, Himself took our infirmities, bore our sicknesses, and by his stripes were healed. So be healed today. It's a choice. It's not by chance. Oh, I hope I get it today. It's not by chance. It's by choice. You have to choose to do the Scriptures. Amen. What are you here for? To do the Scriptures. Amen. And then God will confirm the Word with signs following. When? When you do the Scriptures. Then the confirming's right there. Boom, 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 boom. I don't feel any different. It didn't say it confirmed by feeling. It said it confirmed what you said. Not what you said one time or a hundred thousand times or a million times. What you say now till Jesus comes. That's real faith. Amen. Don't change but your way, the way you're at right now. See, don't debate it in here. Just settle it in here. Then you'll say it out of your mouth. Amen. Have a good one. Have a great one. We'll see you tonight. And remember, what is it that Jesus came here to do? And then the next one, we're going to, uh, what are you here to do? Amen. We went over that today. We'll go over a little bit more uh, later on this evening. We'll see you at 6 o'clock. Have a great one. God bless.